More than 1,000 people have been gathered in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, in support of a coup that a day earlier oyster President Raj Kabore dissolved government, suspended the constitution and closed borders. The latest in a long history of coups in West Africa comes amid an increasingly bloody Islamist insurgency that has killed thousands and displaced millions across the Sahel region. On Monday, soldiers announced they had overthrown Kabore, a move condemned internationally but welcomed by some at home, tired of widespread insecurity, alleged corruption and deep poverty. The crowd gathered in Ouagadougou's National Square to play live music, blow horns and dance. One carried a sign in French saying, quote, no to France. End of quote. A sign of growing frustration about the military role the former colonial power still plays in the region. Well, joining us live right now is an international affairs expert, Mr. Paul Ejime. Good evening, Mr. Ejime. Thank you very much, Maureen. All right. So why the celebration over the coup in Ouagadougou? What does it say to you? So it's a usual, um, you know, uh, reaction that comes with the uh, change of uh, government. When people think they are fed up with um, a particular government and then they welcome anything that um, comes as an alternative. But that is neither here nor there because um, this um, welcome will soon be, honeymoon will soon be over. And then you begin when reality now sets in. Um, people are facing the insecurity, some cannot go to the farm, uh, poverty, and a lot of faith. So, um, will um, this military provide the, uh, the panacea? Is that the solution? Um, not exactly, because we've seen it before. So in French, we say deja vu. Um, they've gone through it, and so it is now for both um, the, they are at home internally and the international community to come together and help uh, uh, Burkinabes to help themselves. ECOWAS should step up, UN and AU, uh, who have not really done much in terms of, remember this is the third, third country now that is uh, going uh, under uh, military rule. In a state of um, uh, within uh, 24 uh, uh, months or less, uh, Mali, there is uh, Guinea, now Burkina Faso, and then you ask which country next? Mm -hmm. The problem is uh, bad governance, corruption, and then uh, the fact that the people are not, uh, uh, government is not providing those um, uh, benefits of, uh, of governance, which is protection of life and prosperity, uh, and pros uh, property, and then. Um, um, human guaranteeing of human rights and um, you know the rule of law. Why, why the, is this the, prevalent? The, the why is this prevalent on the continent? Why do we find black countries having these problems repeatedly? Well, it's a, it's a, one. It has to do. I don't want us to go to the historical um, aspect. It has to do both with national and then external uh, uh, forces that are at play. And the fact that African, even though African, most of the African countries are almost 60 years of independence, they are still, you know, uh, struggling to get um, governance, what it means to provide for uh, the people. That governance is about thinking about the collective. It's not about individuals, it's not about selfish, what the leaders, because the leaders are supposed to serve. But what we find is that even after independence, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the new generation of Africans that have taken over have replaced the colonialists and uh, are doing worse things. You know, they are not taking care of their own people. The Africans rallied against uh, colonialism and, uh, you know, uh, imperialism. But um, their own people have become worse because they are now uh, uh, trying to, they, they are oppressing their people. They are uh, catering, they actually uh, uh, leading to uh, exasperation. Poverty has increased, unemployment, and then exclusion and deprivation. All these have uh, uh, escalated or increased. And you wonder when you were supposed to be self-determination. Uh, 
what what has it what does it mean for Africa? Africa. So I think. Uh, it's about um, critical thinking. Yeah, the, the Africans are known to be very intelligent people. I mean, you have stories of Nigerians who go out there and they excel. They excel. Yet, it would appear that the African continent seems to have, well, not quite the best of their people ruling them. Do you agree with that? Yes, because, and that is where you have now to interrogate the, the recruitment process. Who are the people that have been uh, voted for to, to rule? And what is the process like? Because if you don't have uh, a credible election or election with integrity, you are going to produce uh, um, uh, people that are not capable. And they, those, if you, they, they can't, you can't give what you don't have. That is the point. So Africans will now look at how, who are the people. Don't, you don't vote people in because they have money, without ideas. And then, or there is no vision, and and so they, they, they can't work. They have no leadership quality. That is not so. If you get they get there, you will soon find that um, it is all um, all foam and no beer, like they say. So empty barrels, and so you begin to deal with um, incompetence and then um, uh, mediocrity. So all right, this cool in the problem is, well, I don't know who said because it, of time that in Africa. Yeah, finally, because yes. of time, this coup in Ouagadougou uh, has received international uh, condemnation, but we haven't heard something from France yet. No, I think France will continue to play its uh, uh, dubious uh, role, I, I must say, because part of the problem that you have in these schools, particularly in the Francophone countries, France has um, a, a, a lot to do with it. At times, it has a uh, uh, military base or military soldiers based in this country, it is controlling the economy of these countries. They all uh, subscribe to the, uh, uh, the CFA France, which is uh, controlled by the uh, Treasury. So this is a case of giving somebody a goat uh, or sheep, but you are holding on to the rope. Um, the French-speaking um, Francophone countries are struggling with their, their economic independence. It is not enough to give them to take the flags what I call flag independence, without uh, economic independence. I think that is part of the problem. And then the, the, the character and the quality of leaders that I uh, imagine from uh, all these countries, both in uh, Francophone, Anglophone, and all, all, the, all the phones. Mr. Paul they need to think like Africans. Mr. Paul Ejime, thank you so much for your time uh, on this. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.